All right, so here we are, Stress Busters, the uh, series entitled Stress Busters. We're on the uh, last lesson, lesson number nine, title of this uh, lesson, God's Prescription for Burnout. Well, as I said, it's our last lesson in our series, and I certainly want to thank everybody who uh, participated. Of course, there's so, uh, so much more uh, that can be uh, said uh, about this uh, particular topic, so much more information that's available uh, on this uh, topic of stress and burnout. Our series uh, was simply uh, an introduction to the, to the subject itself. Our approach uh, to the problem of stress uh, was a little different, however, because as believers in God and Jesus Christ, we propose that the most satisfying solution to stress problems can only be found through faith, through the vehicle of faith, through the practice of faith. And so with this in mind, I'd like to complete our series with the story of one man's struggle with stress and burnout and how God helped him uh, with these uh, and uh, helped him to recover. So this is the Bible story of the prophet Elijah. So I want you to take uh, your Bibles out to 1 Kings, 1 uh, Kings, and uh, we will read the story of Elijah and draw some lessons uh, from, that, uh, from that story, especially uh, God's prescription for uh, burnout. So let's read uh, just the first a couple of verses there in 1 Kings chapter 19. It says, now Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, so may the gods do to me and even more if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And he was afraid and he arose and ran for his life and came to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah and left his servant there. Well, we need a little bit of uh, background here if we're gonna understand what's uh, taking place uh, in this story. Elijah the prophet lived in the ninth century uh, BC. He was a prophet who served God during the reign of uh, several kings, but one especially bad ruler, and that bad ruler was Ahab and his wife Jezebel. Now much of his ministry involved the conflict between himself and the royal couple over the introduction of pagan worship in Israel. Now Jezebel uh, was from Tyre and uh, through her influence, the worship of Baal Malkart, the official nature god of Tyre, was being actively brought into the kingdom. Now, I need to realize that the word Baal, we use that often and we hear it often in the Bible, the word Baal, means master or possessor or, or husband. And in a pagan religion, every piece of land had its own master. And so each place or each town had its version of a master or a Baal deity. And so in response to this uh, effort by Jezebel to bring Baal worship uh, throughout Israel, uh, Elijah had prayed for a drought to come over the land and uh, it did not rain for three years. And of course he was doing this to demonstrate the power of the true and living God. Now, since Baal was a deity that was supposed to control nature, this drought was a demonstration of this pagan religion's uh, emptiness and worthlessness. Of course, the drought also made the king and queen greater enemies of Elijah. After three years, Elijah called all the prophets of Baal to meet with him at Mount Carmel in order to demonstrate who was greater. Jehovah, the God that Elijah and the Israelites uh, served, or Baal, the God that uh, Jezebel was trying to bring in uh, to uh, uh, general worship among uh, the Israelites. At this meeting, Elijah taunted and ridiculed uh, the uh, uh, priests of Baal, and he performed a great miracle before the assembled people to show that the God that he served was the true God 
and Baal worship was futile. After this demonstration, he ordered that the 450 prophets of Baal be killed and they were put to death by the people. Of course, you need to remember that these were prophets that were appointed and supported by Jezebel, the wife of Ahab the king. Now, if this weren't enough, he also offered another prayer asking God to send the rain. And after three years, the heavens opened up and the water poured forth. So two great miracles. One, calling on God to stop the rain and you had a drought for three years, and then calling on God to send the rain and God sends the rain and ends the drought in just uh, one moment. Uh, so after doing these things and realizing that he may be in danger, uh, Elijah escaped on foot to another town. And that, you know, that letter that I read before where uh, Jezebel uh, was uh, threatening Elijah was because of uh, what he had done. And so Elijah experienced a physical and emotional and spiritual roller coaster for three years, culminating in the great showdown at Mount Carmel. He, of course, was only a man and he was pretty close uh, to what we've been talking about, and that is uh, burnout. Uh, let's talk a bit about the symptoms uh, of burnout and how they affected um, uh, Elijah. So Elijah experienced things that were beyond what normal life requires of ordinary people. Now, do you remember in another lesson I'd said to you, burnout doesn't happen just when bad things take place but also when good things or spectacular things take place. Uh, remember I said it was uh, overstimulation at times that uh, drove people into burnout. So look at the things that uh, um, uh, Elijah had experienced over a period of three years. First of all, miracles. Now miracles sound wonderful, but they're overwhelming. Uh, they're miracles because they're supernatural, they're God. Uh, who is at work. Well, he had uh, experienced uh, miracles. He had also experienced war. Uh, he experienced natural disaster, which was the drought itself. And then of course, threats of death. He also uh, faced uh, forced travel and hiding. He ran away uh, from the queen uh, so that she wouldn't kill him. And then of course, rejection by society. He wasn't very popular because of the things that he was doing and uh, the, uh, 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 the conflict that he had with the king and the queen. And so uh, people in general can manage some of these things, but when too many good things or too many bad things happen too rapidly, we blow a fuse, so to speak. We, we, we burn out uh, as a protection against total destruction. Burnout has particular symptoms, and we can recognize these symptoms as Elijah has a dialogue with the Lord. So one of the symptoms of burnout is despair, a feeling that there is no hope. And we see that in uh, Elijah in um, verse 4a, where he says, but he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat under a juniper tree and he requested for himself that he might die. And so even though he had witnessed great victory and great miracles, Elijah was in despair. He had no hope, he wanted to die. He had no hope, not because there was nothing to believe in, uh, that there was nothing to prove uh, that his faith uh, was, uh, was true. He had no hope because he couldn't function properly to see these things in their proper context anymore. Sometimes all the good things are right there in front of you, but you're so burnt, you're so jaded, you're so in despair that you can't even see the good things in front of you. And that's what was happening with uh, Elijah. Uh, another symptom of burnout is low self-esteem. In 4b, we read th that Elijah said, it is enough. Now, O oh Lord, please take my life for I am not better than my fathers. You know, he's saying, I'm, 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 I'm worthless. I'm not any better than my fathers. 
uh, who, who, you know, who had done bad things and who had failed in many ways. Burned out people are hard on themselves. No matter what they've done, it's never good enough. It's never, it's never you know, high enough. Uh, burnout makes you feel like a failure and nothing can convince you uh, otherwise. Uh, another symptom of burnout, anger and resentment. In verse 10, it says, uh, he said, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the sons of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars and killed your prophets with the sword. And I alone am left and they seek my life uh, to take it away. And so Elijah felt angry about how he felt. You know, he didn't like the way he felt. It made him feel angry. Uh, if you do your best and if you try your hardest and if you succeed, you should feel good, not bad. So when the only reward we get from all of our efforts is fatigue and depression, we need to step back because we're close to uh, burnout. And then of course, uh, loneliness in uh, uh, verse 14, isolation and uh, loneliness. And we were in verse 14 and then he said, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the sons of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars and killed your prophets with the sword. And I alone am left and they seek my life uh, to take it away. So here, uh, Elijah repeats his complaint and with it, his greatest worry. And that is that he be left alone. Uh, burnout makes us feel that no one understands and no one cares and no one knows how we feel or why we feel the way we do. And, and it's uh, amazing that Elijah repeats to God this complaint as if God can't possibly understand how he feels. Elijah feels compelled to repeat the complaint, you know, to make sure that the Lord uh, uh, understands. And you know, it's interesting that Elijah lived nearly 3000 years ago, and yet his symptoms and his feelings are so very familiar to us who struggle with depression and low self-esteem, resentment and alienation in our modern uh, pressure cooker uh, society. So, uh, so those are some of the symptoms uh, of burnout. And uh, it's good that we're able to uh, um, examine the symptoms as they are experienced by a real a human being uh, that we're familiar with uh, in, the, uh, in the Bible, and that is uh, the prophet uh, uh, Elijah. Well, uh, aside from some of the symptoms, there are some common mistakes uh, that people make because of uh, burnout. Aside from the physical uh, feelings of fatigue and the emotional problems associated with burnout, this condition also pushes us to make mistakes that we wouldn't normally do if we were balanced and if we were rested. For, for example, mistake number one, we focus on feelings rather than facts. We focus on emotion rather than the facts of, of, of what is taking place. Elijah prayed that he might die. He looked inward and saw the world through the lens of his feelings, not through the facts of what had just happened. You know, uh, the idea, uh, I feel like a failure, therefore I am a failure. Uh, this type of thinking is called emotional reasoning and it's a mistake and it's very destructive. People who are overstressed or burnt out are easily drawn to this type of uh, thinking pattern. Mistake number two, uh, we compare ourselves to others. Uh, Elijah cried that he was no better than his fathers. Uh, you know, we usually compare our weaknesses to other people's strengths. And when we do that, we always come out losers, don't we? I mean, we, we always look at the things that are, you know, weak and, and not so good in ourselves. And we compare that to the, the best characteristics of other people. Well, that's a formula for disaster. We never feel good about ourselves if we compare our weaknesses to other people's strengths. Uh, a third mistake, we're motivated by negative things. Elijah complained 
that he had been zealous for God, but the people had rejected God and his preaching in, in verse 10. We blame self, we punish ourselves with criticism and we label ourselves with harsh judgments. It's no wonder we feel bad. Uh, we become our worst critics. I've always said, you don't have to have someone else criticize you. You yourself are your worst critics, uh, your worst critic uh, at times. And then mistake number four, we exaggerate the negatives. We exaggerate the negatives. Elijah cried, I'm the only one left. This attitude degenerates to self-pity and uh, despair. The cycle works somewhat uh, like this. Uh, we are overburdened and overstimulated and overworked and overstressed and, and over uh, worried. And, and this leads to weakened physical and mental resistance as well as uh, a spiritual letdown. And then this condition produces a variety of symptoms uh, such as anger and depression and low self-esteem, the things that we described uh, in uh, uh, Elijah's life. And then these attitudes drive us to make critical mistakes, such as emotional reasoning and false comparisons and negative self-judgment and further alienation from other people. And then these mistakes produce more stress on our system, which perpetuates the vicious cycle leading to total breakdown, total burnout. Well, God has a remedy uh, for burnout, a four part remedy for burnout. Uh, he's aware of the body's frailty, especially uh, under stress. And in this same passage, we see God's remedy to renew a burned out servant named Elijah. And so the first thing that God prescribes for Elijah is rest, rest. God gave Elijah rest for his body. We read in verses five to eight, he lay down and slept under a juniper tree. This is Elijah. And behold, there was an angel touching him. And he said to him, arise and eat. Then he looked and behold, there was at his head a bread cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. So he ate and drank and lay down again. The angel of the Lord came again a second time and touched him and said, arise, eat, because the journey is too great for you. So he arose and ate and drank and went in the strength of that food 40 days and 40 nights to Horeb, the mountain of God. You know, the body will short circuit if it does not receive rest and, and nourishment. That's just a fact. You, there's just so much, you know, that your body uh, can take. Uh, a balance of work and rest and leisure is the best medicine for a burned out system. Uh, people usually rest until they are well enough to repeat the same mistakes that led to burnout originally. Workaholics are like this. You know, they need to rest because they're workaholics and their workaholism leads them to burnout. And so they're forced to rest. So they rest and they take it easy and they gain their strength and go on vacation. They come back, you know, I'm fresh, I'm renewed, I'm strengthened so that I can go back to being a workaholic again. And they keep going round and round in this uh, cycle. So what's needed is an attitude that understands that rest and leisure are as important as work in developing a balanced and a pleasing life uh, before God. A second part of God's um, uh, prescription uh, for uh, burnout is release, rest, and release. God allowed Elijah to pour out his heart and his frustrations and his fear and his anger before him. In verse nine and 10, it says, then he came there to a cave and lodged there and behold, the word of the Lord came to him and he said to him, what are you doing here, Elijah? And he said, I've been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the sons of Israel have forsaken your covenant torn down your altars and killed your prophets with the sword and I alone am left and they seek my life uh, to, uh, to take it. Now, the problem with burnout is that it's like a low burning fire inside that never gets extinguished. 
it keeps burning and building and destroying us from the inside. And so here we see him praying and crying and sharing with God and emptying his heart before the Lord so that the emotional energy created by the stress can be released and the heat and the energy of the stress uh, can be extinguished. And that's very necessary. You have to find a way to uh, release uh, uh, the things that are causing the stress uh, within you. And in this case, uh, God brought Elijah to himself at uh, Mount Horeb and allowed him to pour out his frustrations uh, before him, uh, enabling uh, uh, Elijah uh, uh, to, to cool down, if you wish, emotionally, uh, allow him to extinguish the fire that was burning uh, inside of him. Uh, the third step in God's four part uh, uh, practice for a burnout or prescription, if you wish, for burnout is refocusing, refocusing. Elijah was seeing only the problem, but in the cave at Horeb, he sought again the vision of God that had originally sent him to prophesy. And so he heard once again, the voice of the Lord. And so we read in verse 11 to 14. So God said, go forth and stand on the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord was passing by and a great and strong wind was rending the mountains and breaking in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of a gentle blowing. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entrance of the cave. And behold, a voice came to him and said, what are you doing here, Elijah? Then he said, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the sons of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars and killed your prophets with the sword. And I alone am left and they seek my life uh, to take it away. We read again that passage over and over again and we change the context, right? to get an idea of how God is using this prescription, if you wish, uh, to heal uh, Elijah of his uh, burned out condition. You know, sometimes it isn't a change of uh, a place or a change of people that we need. Sometimes it's a resetting of our sights on God and his word and his son, Jesus Christ and his church that is truly needed. We need to reestablish our priorities. And so uh, uh, Elijah goes to Horeb and, and finally he is with God and he knows now that God is listening to him. And so now he goes back uh, to having a dialogue with God, uh, something that he was doing at the beginning of his ministry that gave him clarity and purpose and energy and, 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 and zeal. In the same way, in the cave at Horeb, he was refocusing his vision of, of God and his vision of his own ministry, which brings us to the fourth part of God's remedy uh, for burnout, and that is recommitment. One task was over. It had been a challenge and a burden uh, for Elijah. After a time of rest and prayer and renewal, Elijah is given a new ministry, a different service to perform for the Lord. So we read in verse 15 and 16. And so the Lord said to him, go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when you have arrived, you shall anoint Hazael king over Aram and Jehu, the son of Nimshi, you shall anoint king over Israel and Elisha, the son of Shaphat, of Abel Meloha, you shall anoint as prophet in your, uh, in your place. And so the best way uh, to beat burnout is to be active in different ways with different people pursuing different goals. And we see this here uh, uh, with Elijah. Uh, he's had three years uh, the drought and, and, and everything that took place with the drought and then the confrontation uh, with the uh, priests of Baal. And then of course, uh, uh, the problems with uh, Jezebel 
which eventually led to his, uh, to his burnout. And now God has taken care of him, has fed him, has given him rest, has allowed him to kind of, you know, divest himself of the burning embers uh, of his feelings and emotions, and now has refocused uh, his, uh, his vision to a different ministry, to a different task, and recommitted him to another work uh, to which he will send him, and that is to anoint another king and, 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 and uh, 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 another leader. And he also provides for him uh, a helper that will go with him uh, in the future uh, to, do if, uh, to, do his, uh, to do his work. So if our focus uh, is on God and his purpose, he'll be able to direct us into some service that will give us fresh hope and a renewed sense of purpose and enthusiasm. And he'll also supply us with help to do the work uh, at hand. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, Elisha, there's Elijah, Elijah, and Elisha uh, was to continue Elijah's work, someone to help him and someone to continue in his work of ministry. You know, we need to remember these Bible characters that we read about, they're human beings. They're people just like we, we are here today. Uh, he's an individual who nearly burned out because of the pressures of his service to the Lord, but God renewed him, uh, gave him rest for his body, uh, release for his soul, uh, the refocusing of his spirit, uh, recommitment for his heart, and also he reinforced uh, his ministry and, and strengthened his ministry by giving him uh, a helper uh, to go with him. Uh, God not only cares for us, he knows exactly what we need for what ails us in every generation, uh, no matter what. So the question uh, that I ask is, uh, are you burned out? You know, are you burned out? Uh, are you over anxious and stressed? burned out? Do you recognize yourself in Elijah? Are his symptoms your symptoms? Have, have you given up on man's solutions to fix the problems or worldly ways to be renewed? Uh, denial, escapism, materialism, medication, hedonism, you know, all the isms. I encourage you to try God's prescription uh, for burnout. And the prescription is the following. Find the proper balance between work and rest, even if it means less money, even if it means less prestige, less power. It's more important to have balance in life than abundance in life. Number two, express your feelings to God in prayer and do it often and do it sincerely. Uh, many times burnout takes place because we keep everything in. We repress all the feelings. We, we, we think we can handle everything emotionally. Uh, that's what Elijah thought. Uh, but he required him to pour out his feelings and to pour out uh, the burning embers of his angst and his anger and his fear uh, before God. And then reestablish your priorities, putting Christ and his kingdom first in your life again. Isn't that what Jesus tells us? Seek ye first the kingdom. And then all these other things, you know, food and clothing and all the things that we need, where we'll live. God will take care of all those things. This will properly order all of your other priorities when you put Christ and his kingdom first. And then of course, begin seeking for new ways to serve the Lord uh, through uh, his church. Uh, in these ways, if we try these things, uh, these are ways uh, for Christians uh, to deal uh, with the most serious of overstress, and that is when we reach a stage of uh, burnout. Well, that's our uh, final lesson. I uh, certainly I uh, want to thank you and uh, pray that God blesses you with uh, a peaceful heart, a peaceful heart, a balanced, a balanced life, a meaningful, uh, a meaningful ministry, 
and certainly above all else, you know, the hope that uh, we have as Christians uh, for a new life in Christ uh, that he has promised us uh, through his cross, through his resurrection, and through his promise in his word that he will return and one day bring us with him uh, to a place where there will be no stress, uh, no burnout, no sin, uh, or, or any of these negative things, uh, but all will be uh, lived in peace and joy in marvelous fellowship in the wonderful knowledge and ongoing understanding of who God uh, really is. And all of this without any reference or interference uh, 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 of sin or uh, a weakness of the flesh because all of us will be clothed in a new body. So I thank you uh, for uh, pressing on with us uh, during this uh, stress busters, especially those of you who thought uh, maybe you would, uh, you know, uh, try to take in all nine lessons in the three days that we, uh, that we launched them on our uh, website. So we thank you for watching. Uh, we pray that you continue uh, to uh, support uh, Bible Talk. We've got plenty of material on BibleTalk.tv and we encourage you to go there and find uh, uh, all of the good uh, material that we've prepared for you and for your, uh, for your uh, edification. So we'll see you next time. Uh, we have a new series that we're working on as we speak and uh, should be launched in the new year in uh, 2021. And that'll be the life and times of Isaiah. The life and times of Isaiah, that's what's coming up. So be looking for that, all right? God bless you, we'll see you soon, bye-bye.